This is TBC Television with me, Adam Simbe. Bringing you this week in perspective, um, one of the oldest pre-independence parties, CCM, celebrated 42 years on the 2nd of February. Uh, this is no, uh, I mean, achievement, obviously, and indeed immaturity for one single party to have survived that long after independence. To discuss this as near ruling parties 42 years with me today are, on my right, Professor Ignud Mihanjo, uh, Professor of History, but uh, in his own right, he tells me he's a very ardent um, uh, cadre of CCM. Yeah. Next is Professor um, Samuel Wangwe, Professor of Economics, um, a prominent economics, economic, economist, and um, at one time member of the National Executive Committee of CCM. But he now works for, well, established and works for Daima Consulting Associate. <clears throat> On my left is Professor Gaudensi Mpangara, also a historian uh, and former uh, senior lecturer at the uh, Institute of Bible Studies, University of Islam, then went on to, to Ruaha Catholic University, where he's doing research and lecturing in history as well. Next to my left is Deo Balile, Deogatas Balile, who is a senior journalist, editor of Jamhuri, but also vice chairman of the Tanzania Editors Forum. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. So, let us have a second goal on uh, discussing this very important occasion uh, for the ruling party CCM. Professor Wangwe, the ruling party CCM is this year 42 years of age. Has the party lived up to its own and people's expectation, if you may? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the party... It's for two years old, and CCM. And remember, this starts from 1977, when um, uh, Tanu merged with the Afro Party in 1977. But the tradition of Tanu, I mean, CCM goes further back uh, uh, from the time of uh, uh, 1954. Uh, but basically, you can say from independence, uh, CCM has been standing for uh, the vulnerable groups of society. In particular, it has been a party of uh, the peasants and the uh, workers. And this is what uh, made it become very popular and supported by the majority of the people of Tanzania. And this emphasis from that time uh, has been on agriculture, like politics is agriculture, on health, uh, on education, education of social lands, it has been focusing on uh, the areas which touch majority of it. The workers has been very much on the forefront in the 70s, uh, supporting uh, uh, workers' participation in their places of work. You remember those days, even when uh, uh, the major concentration of workers, like Rafik Textile Mills and others, had the commissioners, comm commissars of uh, uh, the party to make sure that the workers' rights are. Are, 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 are protected. So we would say the party has been standing uh, for the majority of the people of Tanzania and has been uh, uh, trying as much as possible to meet the expectations of it. However, over time, the party has been changing um, with times, and a uh, uh, major change to me, it seems, uh, uh, is when the party was to operate now in the context of a market economy uh, from mid 80s. Uh, when Tanzania decided to embark on the policy reform in, uh, in coping with the market and how to embark on the market uh, yet retain the key tenets uh, of the early, uh, early period of defending rights of workers and uh, peasants uh, in this new context. 
Uh, so we see in 1991 with the Zanzibar resolution, uh, it's like uh, the party more or less said now, uh, we repeal the, the leadership code and allow leaders to, to operate freely in the market. And without uh, curbing the, the leaders in participation in the market in that sense, it opened up um, the room for large inequalities and their peasants and workers started losing their, 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 their positions and I think their expectations and hopes which they had earlier started to get lost at that time. Uh, so from that time, we see the party uh, leadership uh, being uh, very different from what we had seen in the 70s, uh, where leadership was actually nurtured, uh, trained, went through ideological uh, classes in, uh, in uh, Kibukoni. We saw leaders now coming in um, without much preparation ideologically, but preparation in terms of the pocket to be able to push through and become leaders. So he found leaders who had no uh, history in the, in the ideological standing of the party, but could afford to pay their way through. So towards the 90s and uh, uh, 2000s, and the party itself, in their own review, it, said, it acknowledges this challenge of having to cope with the market uh, and make sure the market is used to drive the area interest uh, of the majority of the people of Tanzania, the peasants and the, the workers. Do you think, do you think, Professor? Yeah. What you have just said uh, is 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 a homegrown uh, or the party that is on um, consideration, or there was some kind of pressure from globalization and the other multilateral or multinationals like the World Bank or something to change yes. from what they, they believed in to get into market uh, eco economic policies or trends. There was pressure from outside, but there was also an opportunity for the party to retain its role as a, 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 in terms of leadership uh, even in the context of the market, like we see in the case of China, in the case of Vietnam, where the uh, ruling party adopted the market, but in a more gradual and managed way, so that you don't lose track of what you started with. Okay. But in our case, with that interference, we lost track. Uh, so system of the later period and the system of the earlier period uh, it's quite uh, different, but one characteristic which, characteristic which runs through the system has been able to change over time, change over time. But in the more recent years, adaptability, as it adaptability. Way. That's very, a very strong characteristic. Oh, okay, thank That's you very much, Professor. Expectations <laughs> sometimes met, some extent. Yes, but uh, disappointments uh, in other times. Or sometimes lost. Yeah, gained. Or lost. Or lost. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Professor Pangala, um, help us to say through this question, the CCM of the past and the CCM of today and um, the principles that created this or drove uh, as a driver, as it were, to CCM being that popular and strong party. So has it lived up to its expectations? And uh, are the people of Tanzania, members, for example, uh, in general, uh, accept that, yes, what CCM stood for has been fulfilled historically at 42? Oh, thank you very much. Uh... The same as a, a, a long history. Of course, 42 in terms of when it made Afro Shiraz party and uh, Tanu into CCM. But before that, uh, you had Tanu, born in 1954, 66 years since when it was born. 
independence in 1961, 58 years. Since it has been for, from, for 58 years in power. Uh, Afro Shirazi Party, born in 1957, uh, that means. 62 years old. Uh, since the revolution, uh, it is now 54 years in power. So in Zanzibar, uh, there is a difference of years, but from since 1977, uh, uh, they are the same. Uh, when I look at why, is it still in power? When you look in the Africa, African context, um, most of political parties in Africa, uh, which were fought for independence, liberated their countries, they are no longer in power. Uh, you know, Zambia Union, the first battle party elections. They lost. They lost. And uh, Mobutu tried, but was overthrown by Kabila. Obote overthrown twice. Uh, of course, in Kenya, Kanu tried to, to consistently remain in power, like like to, to survive was it? Well. Survive. <laughs> but 2000 is true, but it was overthrown by the opposition and disintegrated. Yes. So you can tell many stories, live out, out, out besides the, those armed liberation parties in Southern yes. Africa. Yes. But the rest. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just on that point, Professor Mpagara, how about the history of West African countries? I mean, Nigeria, uh, Ghana. Ghana got independence first, the first country in Africa, and then of course Nigeria. Just about same time with us. But they had strong party. Uh, Kwame Kuruma, uh, the, the what they call the CP, CPA or CPU, C -C. CPC in, in Ghana, and then the Tafa Balewa's party, I can't remember his name now. Have all these survived as well? No, Kuruma was overthrown in 1966. Yes. Where is it? Tafa Balewa in Nigeria. This, 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 the same year. And uh, later on, uh, of course, in Nigeria, uh, since the military took power, there's been a military state for, for over 30 years, mm. uh, until 1999, uh, when now a, civ a civilian government came back. Uh, you know, tomorrow, uh, they are having an election between uh, it's, it's, you have competition between Buhari and Atiku Abubakar. Mm -hmm. But that, that election was postponed, isn't it? Yes, it was postponed one week. Oh, okay, yeah. but they're, they're resuming. They're re re resuming tomorrow. Okay. And they are f the fears are now coming from the, the ruling party, not from the opposition. Normally <laughs> in Africa, fears of rigging the election come from the opposition that the, the ruling party will rig the election. But now fears come from the ruling party that the opposition part, which is the strongest of Atiku Abubakar, uh, is likely to, co to collude with the, the, the independent electoral commission uh, so that they, it rigs the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. We, we, we hear the CCM cadre's opinion when, when, when his turn comes. Yes, continue, Professor. Yeah, so, as the professor was saying, uh, of course, the building of this party has been very historical. That since when it was it, it started. It is tentacles to the grassroots level. Uh, TAA, since 1945, it prepared itself. You know, the idea of transforming T 
TAA into Tanu TAA for was the viewers was conceived in, in India by soldiers who were fighting in the Second World yeah, War TAA for the for the benefit of the viewers Tanzania African Association Tanganyika African oh, sorry, Association Tanganyika, a yes. civil society organization the idea was conceived in India by soldiers who had who now who were waiting to be shifted back to, to, to Tanganyika they said when we go back you see India is nearly getting independence uh, why not? Are we not going to fight for independence in Tanganyika? And we shall transform TAA into TAN. So when they came, they conceived that idea and TAA prepared itself to be transformed into TAN. So that's why it started opening branches now up to the rural areas. It was a, 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 a town based t, the civil society organization. Now it started opening. Santa Cruz in the rural areas, offering branches with the cooperative organizations. So when in 1954 it transformed into TANU, TANU had already had to, to, had to have all those branches of TAA became branches of TANU, and TANU opened more branches. And TANU therefore strength, became a very strong uh, nationalist political party leading, mobilizing all Tanganyikans for independence. And that mobilization made the town a very strong part. So the elections of 1958, 59, and 1960, Tanu won, uh, of course it was against other political parties, I'm not, ANC, uh, and that, you, uh, European based political party. Uh, so, so, Khan was a very strong party because it won over 90%. Uh, all the seats. So, that made Khan a strong party. Until it's, now, after independence, Marium said, I must develop Khan into a mass based party. And it must be a leading party. He decided to resign in 1962, soon after independence, to build the party. He had already, it had already built, but to build more. Make it stronger, much more stronger Ma than before. Make it much more stronger to lead Tanganyika. They agreed with Kambona. Kambona was the, 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 the Minister of Education. Uh -huh. But uh, they agreed before, soon before independence that you are secretary. Kambona was secretary general. He, he was the president of Tanu. When we get independence, let us, you and I, resign from our positions in the government and concentrate to construct the party. So in January 1962, Nyerere resigned, but Kambona refused. <laughs> <laughs> Kambona refused. So Nyerere concentrated on constructing the party and developing the ideology of socialism and self-reliance and developing those ideological perspectives. But when he resigned in 1985 as a president, who was still chairman of the party up to 1990. Uh, he concentrated again in reconstructing the party. So he was still co continuing so to reconstruct. The party really turned and later on the system uh, had a strong base, a strong base. Uh, partly because of that, it has been a party that has survived. But then, as the professor was saying, then after. Uh, when now the neoliberalism intervenes in, in Tanganyika and other African countries to adopt now, to, to, to move from socialism into capitalism. Uh, that's where now changes began to take place. But that base still helped CCM to continue to be a strong party during multi-party elections after, after the adoption of multi-party elections. Remember, I think you remember, the percentages 
uh, which opposition candidates got, even presidential, even Wabunge, uh, were very small compared to CCM after the adoption of multi party politics. Uh, the elections, 95, the elections of uh, 2000, 2005, from the elections of 2010, changes began to take place, at least up to, to the election of 15, the situation completely changed. <laughs> uh, the opposition <coughs> now emerged strong. The question is why did that take place? Is it because CCM, uh, now, <laughs> is it because CCM was now becoming less uh, uh, as he was saying now, entrenched? That, 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 that stronghold, grassroots stronghold, uh, began now to, to, to change, began to change. Even at grassroots level now, people began to support now the opposition. And uh, I, 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 when I look at it, I see that it is, it is CCM itself uh, is somehow to blame. Why? Be, 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 because uh, if af even after the adoption of multi party politics and the neoliberal economic system, the market system, they should, CCM should have continued with the dem democratic approach of strengthening itself within the, among the workers and the peasants. But now, uh, you, 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 the leadership uh, began to enter into the process of primitive accumulation. What, did, what was the word you used? Primitive? Yeah, we used this. Primitive accumulation. In, 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 in history, primitive accumulation was the, of uh, in Europe. <laughs> 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 between 1915 and 1919, uh, uh, between the 15th century and uh, the 19th century, mm. primitive accumulation, uh, where the, the, the capitalist class struggled to accumulate wealth uh, to, 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 to become rich. And uh, so the, the leadership and so on began to accumulate wealth. Uh, and therefore, this is touch with the, grass, the grassroots people. As the professor was saying, with the workers and the peasants. Uh, that's, the, the Zanzibar, I have read that, that one, it's very interesting. It says that uh, we shall continue to be uh, the Arusha Declaration. We don't abandon it. We only made modifications. But modifications to allow the leadership and the members of of CCM to at least to indulge into small business, small business, not a rich business, big business. But then where could you make the difference? Then do where could you draw a line between small business and big business? <laughs> so people began to enter into big business. Uh, and they began to get the system began to come into alliance with the business class. Uh, so I think Professor knows <laughs> better. <laughs> now elections, uh, elections now required the use of millions of money. Millions of money. Which the peasants, at the ordinary farmers, yeah. who were the basis. Uh, of the CCM principles at, mm. from, at the beginning ca cannot afford that or could not afford yeah, that. Could not afford. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Could not afford. So, 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 so that now that resulted into corruption, Polit beginning with political corruption, bribing voters a lot of money. Political corruption had resulted into Social economic corruption. <laughs> where, where, where do you get that money to bribe the voters? So you, you have to use your position again eh, to steal money eh, and uh, start uh, uh, business projects, and then you you can now compete. You can now compete. So 
this period now became a period of what I call a period of political corruption leading into socio-economic corruption. Uh, and, 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 and now, of course, that has gone on. That was now a strategy for CCM to continue remaining in the power through political corruption. Oh but now that has gone, after 19, now 1915 was a, now a t another turning point for CCM because it, almost lo it was almost to lose power. That has threatened CCM greatly. So they had to change, to, to, to add, not to change, to add another strategy. The strategy now of suppressing democracy, multi party democracy. I hope Professor would agree here, but your, your fellow, <laughs> your, your fellow Professor, you know, now an additional cut. strategy to, to remain in power. For me, I say, all of those strategies, the political corruption strategy, and the suppression of democracy strategy, uh, are, make, are, are damaging system more than if they used democratic strategy. The strategic strategy to continue with the workers and the peasants eh, that could help them more to sustain, to remain in power, rather than for a longer period. For no, a longer no, no, period, not for eternity, though, is it? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> for a longer period. <laughs> Uh, okay, Professor, let, let's see you now. Uh, thank you very much for your um, analysis there. <laughs> to you, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Professor Mihanjo, yeah. you heard Professor Wangwe, now Professor Mbangara. Um, you're very much involved in CCM parties, activities, by the advice, uh, not so much of guidance, but you do, but as a cadre, would you agree with the views, Professor, the both Professor, your, your, your fellow Professor, have said? Or what, what is your position on this? The same as what it will, has it remained the same? Has it, does it continue to respect its own principles of um, being a part of the peasants and, and, and uh, workers? Or oh, it has abandoned this and gone into embrace into embrace uh, um, market economic policies by actually abandoning part of the Arusa Declaration and replaced by what they call the Zanzibar uh, resolution. What is your position on this? Yeah, <coughs> thank you. It's a, a difficult question. <laughs> and uh, I will try to tackle. Time limit is uh, another difficulty. Uh, partly, I agree some of uh, the observations made. Uh, CCM uh, strategies have a leadership gap and that has led to losing the grassroots support. But... Uh, yes, sorry, sorry, Professor. You yes. agree that it is losing, or it has lost grassroots support? It is losing. It is losing. And that's the continuous? Yeah. It is losing. All right. Uh, I will give you an example. When the fourth phase president came in, CCM had 80%. And in 2015, 58%. That big gap, yeah. Big gap. And when uh, 2011, we were engaged on party reform, one of the challenges the chairman pointed to us is that his votes have gone down. From 80 to 60, he, want, he wanted to know why what has happened. Uh, seriously, the threat is 
inside the CCN. Not from outside. Not, it's not outside. external. Not external. If we look on the opposition, whether you use the threat analysis or capability model, there's weakness on the opposition. But when you make threat analysis and vulnerability assessment, much weakness is inside CCM. What is the weakness? One, the leadership gap. You have almost 30 years, no training of party cadres, of leaders, succession plans. There's no way you can survive as a political party if we are not doing that. We abandoned Kivukoni and all party colleges. Where do we train leaders? Party work is the most difficult task on all parties if we want to survive in power. You need to do party work. That is why Mpakala said Mwaribu had to resign. He, he had to do party work. And that is the task which is missing. That was phase one. But also there was phase two of Mwarimu. 85, he went to do party construction, a party work. Another one was conceived, a third party work. 19, uh, 2000, 10 something, it was, we tried, there was training in Doloma, we called it training, uh, Ehemi training outside Ehemi. It was between October and December 2006, about, uh, about uh, 200 members were trained, but again, it has died. You don't maintain ruling party by picking people from nowhere. And people, you need to train the people on the party work. And you, you must maintain a bank of leadership. And the leader have been to be told that the strategy of CCM, our main, our main <coughs> stakeholders are peasant and the workers. But second, I want to deal the, on the strategies. CCM has also been able to survive because it has been able to adapt the strategies always took care of international global situation and local situation you know there is issues of general nature like colonialism like capitalism those are general but specific these are local here. You have to check your condition inside. Are you strong enough uh, to uh, not to agree to IMF? <laughs> Is it good at this time to agree to or IMF? To or to disagree. Or, or to disagree. Uh, so, if you read the part of evo uh, evaluation, of 20 years, 1977 to 1977, it, it says a lot of the kind of problem CCM had at the end of 1970s and 1980s. Therefore, it has to do strategic 
reach it one step or two steps backward so that you regroup, you gain the momentum to go forward. Um, I, I understand if a couple of years back uh, there was um, an exercise to do um, a transformational approach to transform the CM. Space there was to Jigua, to, to Jigua, Jigua Gamba, yeah. well, I don't know what that meant really. Yeah. And then recently, uh, I don't have to refer to which phase, but this is what happened to, 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 to reform the party, reducing the number of um, delegates to the Central Committee, to the National Executive, and this uh, kind of removing this double positioning one one individual holding two or three positions within the party so th these reforms are they are they have they become effective i mean have they been accepted by the the rank and file including the cadres like you uh, this is uh, not a new strategy it was uh, even in one party then in multi party, then now again, uh, re, just uh, we, if we we go back documents, uh, they are there, and uh, in the document which I say, one of the issue was party governed relationship and uh, the kind of contradiction by people having one title, two titles, uh, uh, the problem were there. And uh, uh, the key issue is how you keep the grassroots part of the party. Because if system loses that, and now it is really losing. Is it? At what speed? Is it very fast? I have shown. Oh, it's a gradual. I, oh, it's a gradual. I have shown in the election. Yes. And. Uh, uh, in the in the in, in the Kujivu uh, Agamba, uh, 2010 we did the uh, uh, research on election of 2010, and we pointed out that for the first time, out of 28 regional headquarters. CCM for the first time lost 10 constituencies. And we accounted much more that has to do for the loss of the grassroots support and the youth generation. Mm -hmm. And the rule is also changing. The more you bring development to the rural, it creates more mindset for change. It is the same challenge which ZANU PF is facing, the same challenge ANC is facing, the same challenge SWAPO is facing. So, unless CCM ties more with the grassroots, and the grassroots center, which can do that, is the 10 cell. Unfortunately, the 10 cell is less involved now. Except when there is election, uh, uh, Mpakala said uh, a lot of money has to, be, uh, has to be involved in that. And that is when you, you go to a 10 cell leader. Uh, at least uh, to make sure somehow you you get the vote. Yeah, because because, <laughs> because I, I in following up these uh, political yeah. trends in that angle, I understand it became so common that for any leadership you had to buy your way through to become a councillor, 
to become a member of the National Executive. I'm, I'm not sure the professor also spent money to get there, but I don't think he did. I would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to, to become chairman of the council, because you, you, first you have, to be, you have to belong to the CCM to be guaranteed that you will win. And to, be, to get that guarantee, you have to pay your way out. So, we, uh, is, is that a, a dangerous trend? Then I'll come back to the point that Professor Pagara raised, that while CCM is losing its ground, popularity, um, through the peasants and the, and the workers, um, it has added another di dimension, that is uh, democracy. We use the word suppressing democracy. But he was suggesting that CCM to become strong again and continue, it, it has to go back to its basic root support, grassroots support, and to promote democracy. Do you think CCM is really promoting democracy? Because the latest development seems that uh, it doesn't, and you're leading to one party system. Is that true? I see it is a, a leadership game. In the same way as uh, the Zanzibar. Resolution? Zanzibar uh, resolution. resolution. The documents are not about opening up to capitalism, but the leadership uh, takes the approach as if that resolution led to that. And I, I tell you, in 2003, I attended a central committee seminar in Zanzibar Kiswandui. A major discussion was that should we declare that CCM is a capitalist party? And therefore the country it was not a, it was not agreed. And in 2004, we came out with the document. Sarah Zamsingi Zachama. Find that document. It is about Ujama, Ujama, Ujama. Yes, Professor, but all these might be in, uh, in documented, in books, you know, whatever research you are supporting, you are helping to get. But in practice, that doesn't seem to be obvious. Uh, uh, obviously clear in the minds of um, the peasants and the farmers, the workers that you think are your, your foundation, as it were. So the big question will be, after all that, is Tanzania. First, the ruling party, which has been in power for over 42 years, for much longer, according to Professor yeah. Pangara, uh, for that matter, believe that this country is still led by African socialism, or they have ad adapted as a result of the Zanzibar um, um, resolution, a capitalist approach. So are we capitalists, are we socialists? Very quickly, before they were no he has been anxious to come in. <laughs> you know, Ujama is a goal, is an ideology which makes people equal. Yeah. But capitalism is a worldwide word phenomena. Uh, and uh, Ujama Mwarimu came out of, with Ujama before even the Arusha Declaration. Arusha Declaration is, it is more on leadership principles. So when you erode leadership principles, uh, you create a leadership game. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Dave, I'm sorry. We, we, sorry. Ta we, we have taken that long, and I'm told we only have 15 minutes, but you have oh. enough time to go because <laughs> we have to go back to some of the questions. What's your take on this very quickly? Uh, honestly, uh, I would say that uh, a lot of things have happened in the last 42 years. If you look at the first phase government, it was much entrenched on building the infrastructure, building the institutions, putting down the leadership codes, and whatsoever. Come the second phase, 
was almost to undo what was done by the first phase uh, through the pressure that was put on by the World Bank and the SATS structure adjustment programs. So the Mwini had to undo almost everything which was done by the first phase government. Come the third phase of government, we had to copy a little bit of what was a, the, the pressure which was applied to the second phase under privatization. So Honorable Mkapa had His Excellency Mkapa had to privatize almost everything and at times privatized blindly. Then came the fourth phase government. It, it, it became an international uh, relations kind of a government where we built good relations with the America, China, and the, oh, mention, mention all these Union, nations. Yes. But economically and the whatsoever, I don't want to tell much, but came the first, the fifth phase government. It is much on building patriotism and industrialization. But now you look at it, the government is trying to save the vision 2025, yet claims to be a part of socialism and the self-reliance, which I can't see happening. I can't see happening. Why? Uh, internally, as lightly put by the professor here, we have had a, a good number of people who have high expectations and supersonic appetite to the president's position. So whatever is done in this country is gauged by presidents. As of now, some people are preparing for 2020, 2025, 2030, 2040. So this has become a nation of elections. And so, uh, elect a country of anticipation for <laughs> anticipation, leadership. internally yeah. triggering antagonism. Now they are witch hunting. Who is doing what? Who is delaying what? Uh, at the end of the day, the infight is too big to contain to the extent that we forget the, 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 the primary duties which should have been done. Like it, is started, it all started in 1961 when, when we got the independence. Uh, there is the ongoing question, whether we got the independence or the freedom, whether we are, we are free or we are dependent. And when you look at it, our country was so much attached to peasantry and the workers, and they forgot this element of building the business community. So we, 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 we set the vision, ideally, that by 2025, we will be a middle-income country. But we are not building the business. We are not helping them. We need to have state-sponsored individuals who are, worth, who, have, who are rich. We need to have uh, state-sponsored corporations which should have been rich. Mwari Mirele tried, built about 500 per status, but now he did not put the mechanism how to run business. I'm trained in business to some extent at master's level. So when I look at how we behave in the business community, we are not heading to 2025 vision 20, to achieve vision 2025 and countries like china china has 11 companies state companies state corporations they are just 11 but they command 17.7 trillion us dollar as the country gdp it is harbored by those 11 11 corporations these companies like hainan which are building bridges are building <coughs> our bus systems here they are provincial companies which are state-sponsored. When they get the job outside their country, they are given money from the national banks. They come here, they build the projects, they take back the money and earn the profit, which part of it goes to the government coffers. But for us here, we feel shy of, 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 of supporting individuals. We have the policy of 2003, indigenization policy, and its law of 2004. Yet we had a law, two laws actually, in 1991 they were enacted by the Parliament of Tanzania, which were looking into avenues <coughs> how best they can help to push or to, 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 empower, uh, to empower the indigenous to command the economy. But here we are, we command the politics, but in terms of economy, we are nowhere to be seen. But we should not it, forget. Can that be because we, we, we still believe erroneously or otherwise, that we are a socialist country. We can't be building capitalists. That's idealism. But now we need to be materialist. <laughs> we need to be materialist. Otherwise, we should not forget the fact that we have surveillance 
in place, surveillance in what term? Uh, we have the younger generation, <coughs> which is almost taking about 84.7% according to the 2012 census, because you count the generation of 0 to 15 is 50.1% uh, years. Uh, the generation of 15 to 35 is almost 30.4%. 34 so in total, you have something like 50, 84.6, something like that, according to the 2012 census. So at the end of the day, these young boys and girls, they have their smartphones. They look over the, on the television. They see what is happening to other countries. When we say China, they, they read these histories, how the Deng Xiaoping changed the China. When they go to the Tiger Asian countries, they see how these companies like Samsung and whatsoever are coming out. They get the, the appetite to get money. For us, if we keep on pushing these idealist material ideas, oh, you need to be socialist, uh, Ujama is a goal, we cannot eat goals. <laughs> we need to build strong nations with strong economies, with strong individuals, and at the end of the day, okay, you okay. can't have a rich nation with the poor citizens. I'm really surprised that uh, we have taken that long. Only <laughs> four speakers. Anyway, let us kind of wind up and conclude. We'll start with you, we'll go around this way very quickly. So what are the challenges of the CCM at 42? Very quickly. Uh, the biggest challenge is how CCM is putting in, trace, in place a system that can help to nurture business and establish uh, proper channels for paying taxes, for creating wealthier individuals and indigenous companies. We cannot depend on foreign companies to build our country. Won't you be building a much bigger gap between the haves and the have-nots? Never, never fear the gap. The gap will be there always. It is even there by now. What we can do is to manage the gap like China did. One country, two systems. We get the taxes, we give social services. All These right. individuals who are wealthier will continue with <laughs> their life. It is no sin to have the, the, the Bill Gates here, to have the Boren Wallen here, to have the, 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 the Jack Chan and so many others. So the gap, we should not fear the gap. As we fear the gap, we we'll never get money. All right, thank you. Professor Bagar, one challenge very quickly. What should you, what is the challenge now facing CCM at okay, 42? For, for me, I, I, I appreciate the current effort of, 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 of pushing up the economy uh, with the ideas of industrialization, the construction of infrastructure. These are all over positive aspects. But then the, there has come a, a, an ideology of separating democracy and the development. Ah. Tanzania, since the time we started building this nation, that's, that's, that's why my was very clear. Can separate development, de democracy and development must go together. De no democracy without development, no development without democracy. Is that the case now? And the socialism, the same, no socialism without de democracy and no democracy without socialism. And that should continue. Okay. Now there, there is an idea of separating that we must postpone it to democracy <laughs> and uh, <laughs> concentrate on development. Yeah. And that's a danger to our country. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Professor Angui. Yes, well, my, my take is um, um, that's from where the, the main agenda, I mean, when Professor uh, Hanjo said the uh, system was losing. Uh, in the 2010, around there, the main reason was really corruption. And the main agenda of the opposition party was corruption. This party is corrupt. So indeed, the issue of war gamba came in response to that. And the 2015 winning of elections came mainly on the agenda of anti-corruption, uh, which system actually snatched from the opposition. And the opposition was silenced by the type of leadership they put in, 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 so in, in, in the competition. So the way you see now, the, that agenda should be institutionalized and consolidated, okay. anti-corruption. Okay. But secondly, uh, as we, uh, the, we embark on industrialization, we should go back to the question which he really asked when the um, uh, Arusha Declaration was being pronounced. He said, now we have the Arusha Declaration. What kind of party 
will be able to take us through uh, with this dilution equation. So that question we should ask now. We are talking about industrialization. What kind of party will take us through uh, industrialization? That's, that's a big and challenge to CCM. It's a big huh? challenge. And go back to, uh, since we are talking about transformation, transformation of the rural economy should get precedence. And therefore, we cannot lose, we cannot leave behind the majority of the people. Uh, health, health, democracy, I think, is extremely important. Stick to the main agenda we have. Otherwise, uh, if we, the danger of using the strategy of intimidation is going to give the opposition an agenda. But look, this is intimidation, not democracy. We don't want the, we don't, you no, don't want the opposition to have an agenda? I want them to come with an, a development agenda. Right. Not an agenda given to them right. by the ruling party. Thank you very much. Thank Professor Mihanjo, how, conclude very quickly, I mean, uh, how will, will the system survive? What you have discussed here, and uh, what's the future? Will it continue to rule for... For eternity, oh, because this was mentioned by some people recently, by some leadership, but the CCM will be in power for the, for the rest of the, whatever, for life. Do you see CCM very quickly? Well, I, the challenges? I have said the threat is there. Uh, by 2015, it was 50-50, so the threat is there. Uh, and the second, Always, uh, when I talk about Ujama as the center of issue, eh, which connect people, grassroots people, with CCM, people think it is academic. Mm -hmm. Because you are an academic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but capitalism, as you said, correct, China has not left behind ideology. Eh? It is socialism with Chinese characteristics. Yeah. Uyama is a unifying ideology. In a state formation, there must be an ideology which brings people together from grassroots, whether people have differences, but there must be an ideology which make a country together. Uh, do, are we, do we lack a lateral ideology now? Uh, at least under Malimu, we were all together because... Yes, because of uh, the leadership gap. All right. Yeah, we have leadership patriotism now. now. We have patriotism now. Okay. <laughs> it cannot make this patriotism if you don't have a unifying yes. thing Patriot together. Patriotism around America. Uh, well, pa patriotism, there's religious patriotism, <laughs> there's liberal patriotism, <laughs> this is political patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> well, my parents, I, I wish I wish I had more time. But I'm um, constructed, constricted by the limitation. But um, what more can I say? I thank you very much for your um, analysis of CCM at 42 and the historical background and whatever. And what you see as the challenges for CCM to... To, to make it survive even longer than the other parties which have not been able to survive, the pre-independence party, the pro-independence party, the stronger ones have uh, not survived. But to CCM has survived, and you've tried to answer that question. But you also have uh, sent an alarm signal that if CCM doesn't go back to its grassroots level um, and believe in that, uh, and in kind of embrace a socialism as well as a, um, a capitalism like the Chinese way, two, two ways to approach it, it may lose its popularity. And you gave evidence of the 2010 elections, which again, the, the new Secretary General raises, and it, it was a concern that uh, we should go back. Why people don't vote for CCM? They didn't vote in large numbers for CCM in 2010 election. So some of the answers you have provided. The rest, of course, are the Tanzanians themselves. So I thank you very much for this, my dear panelists, viewers. That's all we have for you today.
And therefore, we conclude for tonight until next Monday at night, 9.30 at night, and on Thursday at 15 hours for the repeat program. On behalf of my very capable, very able, eloquent, understanding, experienced panelists here, Professor Mihanjo, Professor Wangwe, Professor Mpangala, Senior Journalist uh, Deo Badile, and my TBC Television Center crew. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.